When it comes to electronics, there are a few companies that have made as much of an impact as Hitachi. From its humble beginnings in Japan to its global presence today, Hitachi has been a driving force in shaping the world of electronics for over a century. In the 70s, 80s and 90s, Hitachi was a giant in the world of electronics and was responsible for some of the most important innovations in the field. Founded in 1910 in Japan, it established as a repair shop at a mining site and quickly expanded into producing electric motors and other electrical equipment. Over the years, the company continued to grow and innovate, becoming a major player in the electronics industry. Its founder, Namihei Odera, had a vision of creating technology that could change the world and he did just that. By the 1930s, Hitachi had become one of the largest industrial companies in Japan. In the 1970s, 80s and 90s, Hitachi's innovations in the world of electronics were truly groundbreaking. In the 70s, Hitachi made a big splash with the introduction of the Magic Wand, a massager for therapeutic use that quickly gained a reputation as a more intimate device for personal use and is still in production today. Hitachi's innovations didn't stop there as they also became a major producer of air conditioning units which helped shape the world of indoor climate control. Hitachi continued to push the boundaries of what was possible in the world of electronics and produced their first color television and introduced a new form of semiconductor technology which paved the way for smaller and more powerful electronic devices. They were one of the first companies to develop plasma displays which will go on to become a staple of modern television technology. In the 90s, Hitachi introduced some of their most important innovations yet, which included hard drives and LCD displays, and they also played a major role in the development of the CD-ROM, which revolutionized the way we store and access information. Today, Hitachi's impact can be seen in a wide range of industries. From energy and transportation, to healthcare and finance, they're even involved in the development of smart cities to create more efficient and sustainable urban environments. While Hitachi may not be as prominent today at your local electronics retailer, their impact on the world of electronics is undeniable. And back in the 70s, my uncle was a music enthusiast and purchased himself a made in Japan Hitachi sound system. The amplifier was a high output power pure complementary OCL type amp and the tape deck, according to Hitachi, was geared towards audio files and included many options like an extremely low wow and flutter, three position bias and equalizer, VU meters, and hard permaloy SL Superlife heads. The matching AM FM tuner is the model FT340 that dates back to June of 1977. It was marketed as being a hi-fi tuner for the highest demands, with a modern PLL circuit and MPX interference protection filter that forms the basis for the highest level of playback perfection. It also included two VU meters and boasted a 76 decibel signal-to-noise ratio as another quality feature of this model. It was listed in Audio Scene magazine of 1976 with a retail price of $299.95 Canadian, which was about $220 US in 1977 and representing $1,092 US, 1500 Canadian and 1,013 euros in today's economy. In my second episode on the channel, I restored the amplifier and in episode 9 I restored the tape deck. The tuner is one of the two last components remaining along with the turntable. I want to restore this tuner and be a step closer to completing the restoration of the whole system so that I can pay tribute to both Hitachi and my uncle's legacy and give this vintage stereo system a new life. You and me could make beautiful music together. Hello everyone and welcome. I'm the Retro Repair Guy. So first of all, thank you so much to everybody who wrote uh, emails and uh, you know comments. I really do appreciate it. Now, I know people go through a lot worse and my situation wasn't horrible, but I do appreciate it because it was a rough few weeks. Um, everything started a couple weeks ago. Uh, first, I had some sound issues uh, with this and the microphone, right? So these were little delays. Uh, you know, I'm good at fixing these things, but uh, I had a friend of mine who sets up radio stations to come and help me. Uh, uh, because, you know, it, it's his specialty. And for me, <laughs> you know, I'm having trouble with sound. And what can I say? <laughs> to each his own. So anyways, uh, that was one thing. And then after that, um, you know, I my tooth started hurting like crazy. And uh, I had to get it removed emergency. I still have the... Uh, I still feel the, um, the you know the, the sutures there <laughs> and so uh, I and this happened 10 minutes before uh, everything you know happened the whole chaos of the uh, freezing rain and uh, you know the trees falling and everything 10 minutes before he said 
you know, we're going to take it out quick. Your nerve is dying. Uh, you're in pain and blah, 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 whatever. Uh, so he's got, you know, he says, I think there's a power failure. So let's go. Let's, let's do it quick. So I'm like, okay, take it out. I got out of there 10 minutes later, boom, no power. And uh, thank God, because I would have been in pain for a week again and waiting around with no power. So anyways, that was done. And then of course, during the, the whole storm, I cut my ankle, blood was spewing everywhere. <laughs> it's, a, it's a vein. So anyways, I had all kinds of issues happening, right? And uh, we're still waiting right now on a tree uh, to be cut outside it's it's dangerously hanging over my house and there's all kinds of issues and you know city of montreal waiting on a permit while you know what i don't even want to say because you know they they you know want to issue permits but then they don't take care of the trees themselves anyways i gotta i had to get that out of the way <laughs> and i do have an announcement as well um mrs rg and i have been together for a long time but we never officially tied the knot uh, so we are tying the knot in June and uh, yeah, so I had some preparations to do there too and my mother-in-law is coming to town. <laughs> but you know I, I kid around because i really do love her uh she's really nice but yeah she's coming uh she's coming all the way from uh, germany uh yes mrs rg is polish but uh her mom's in germany so uh she's coming all the way from germany and i can't wait to see them but i had to fix a lot of stuff and at the same time i was uh, doing some renovations and filming an episode for the home theater uh because there's some changes there and you know the cleanup helped me out because honestly you can't see it but all here i couldn't even walk in my office i had stuff all over the place as usual um you know and that's enough now i, I made a big cleanup and and really it was it was so needed after two years of uh you know doing this and this being my third year now I needed to clean up and I needed to make you know, some uh, some order in this. So anyways, all that, all these delays, I apologize, but some of it was all my control. Now today we're looking at the um, third component because there's four components in my uncle's uh, stereo system. Now I repaired the amp in episode two. I repaired the tape deck in episode nine. And now we're going to be looking at the tuner and then there's going to be uh, the turntable a little, a little later. So um, I didn't do any pre-testing out. I'll tell you why because first of all it sat there for 18 years and for 18 years it sat it got water damage big water damage at one point and then after that uh, there was a lot of mold uh, issues uh, because it was a moldy environment and it got mold on the motherboard on top everywhere you'll see uh, so I didn't want to just plug it in and risk you know blowing something uh, so I just went ahead and opened it up so anyways without further ado let's go take a look this video is sponsored by PCBWay. They make great quality PCBs from your Gerber files starting at only $5. All standard PCBs have now been upgraded for free from TG13140 heat resistance to TG150. If you're in need of getting your own PCBs manufactured at reasonable prices for production runs or simply a one-off PCB, they offer excellent quality and unsurpassed service to help you with your designs and free online quotes. And with their quick order feature, your parameters are automatically set from your Gerber files. With fast turnaround times and fast delivery, I definitely recommend checking them out. The link is in the description below. You and me could make beautiful music together.
You and me could make beautiful music together. No initial testing was done as they didn't want to risk blowing anything and the unit went through a flood and was exposed to mold for several years, not to mention that the capacitors on the board are just under a half century old already. There are three switches on the front to select the band, mono or stereo mode and MPX on or off. Two of the three switches weren't engaging or working properly so I began by spraying some electrical contact cleaner. Seeing as it didn't do anything, I sprayed some WD-40 to try to dislodge the mechanism. I let the WD-40 act for a while and came back to play with it some more, only to have one of the switches come apart on me. At this point, I decided I wasn't sure if I was going to continue with the restoration until I knew I could find new replacement switches or that I could repair the existing one, so I began desoldering and taking them off the board. The three switches are held together as a unit and while it's a little tricky to get them out, they can slide upwards and then be pulled out without having to take anything else apart. My goal was to keep the rest intact as I don't want to end up with another tuner cord to fix as I did during the restoration of the flip clock radio. Before changing the caps, I started with a little visual inspection of the board. I checked out a few new switches on DigiKey and went ahead and ordered some similar looking ones. Feeling confident that I would be replacing them, I decided to proceed with the restoration. I began by removing the capacitors in the power supply area. The power supply was using Nippon Chemicon caps. While they are no longer in production, they were very good caps at the time. I tested the first 330 microfarad and it was testing at 377 with 5.8 ohms of resistance. For the power supply area, I opted for Nishikon's low impedance UHE line rated for a long life of 7000 hours and a higher temperature rating of 105 degrees Celsius. For the rest of the caps on the board, I'm installing both UKA and UFW audio capacitors from Nishikon depending on values available, with the main difference being the temperature rating of 85 or 105 degrees. The new capacitors are of course smaller in size while being rated higher, which makes for a neater installation overall. During the recapping of the board, my electric pump began to malfunction. I tried unplugging and plugging it in again, but it was not even heating anymore. So once again, I was back to an old school manual pump. While I wait for the new switches, I figured it's time to take a bath. I have a quick, quick note I want to make about um, this capacitor that's on board here, okay? Uh, it looks like a little glass and the rest of it looks like um, an electrolyte capacitor. So in the spec, if you go look at the spec, it calls it a styrol capacitor. Now a styrol capacitor is actually a polystyrene capacitor. They're a little bit harder to find, okay? Uh, and especially if you wanna to go to a reputable source. Uh, unfortunately, I did not find them at DigiKey. I was looking fast, so I'm not gonna say they don't have them, uh, but I didn't see any there. I did find them at Mauser, and um, I, I think I took a screenshot, so I'll put it on screen as well too. Um, only for a couple of dollars, but sometimes they can get very expensive, okay? Uh, now if you wanna replace it with something else you cannot replace it with a ceramic capacitor and you cannot replace it with an electrolyte capacitor it has to be either a polystyrene but you can depending on the application uh, replace it with a film capacitor now for the electronic guys out there um, this is not an argument this is not a, you know don't shoot me for the way I'm explaining things this is very layman's term um, and like I said it's just uh, to explain to you that this styro capacitor can be replaced depending on the applica application and uh, that you can still find them but like from reputable sources uh, it's a little hard so that's all I wanted to tell you about that you and me could make beautiful music together
could make beautiful music together. The switches came in, but unfortunately, while they look similar, they're only half the size of the older ones, and one of them doesn't even lock into the on or off position. I looked around on the internet, and while I don't believe I have any Irish blood, I do have the luck of the Irish when it comes to such things, and it just so happens that I found the only set of switches for this 46-year-old tuner selling on eBay and located only 30 minutes from my place. The seller was asking $20 and made me an offer at $15, which I quickly accepted. The switches are identical, clean, and most of all function. The seller even included the bracket and the two screws. Just meant to be, I guess. Before I installed them into place, I finished replacing and testing the rest of the capacitors on the board. And of course, for my own satisfaction, I tested two random ones like this 47 microfarad that tested at 55 with 41 ohms of resistance, and another at 330 that tested at 366 with 21 ohms of resistance. The board was dirty and needed some cleaning before I resoldered the switches into place because it had sat there for so many years. I wasn't able to throw this one in the dishwasher because that would mean restringing the tuner, so I used my trusty blower and followed that up with a soft paintbrush just to dislodge the rest of the dirt. While I was there, I sprayed the tuner with contact cleaner and used the toothbrush to clean between the plates and then used my blower a second time. I had to make sure the pins on the switches were perfectly straight and remove any solder blobs that remained on the legs. The seller had done an excellent job and there was barely anything. I also made sure to spray some contact cleaner since I could easily access the holes while they were off the board. I then had to reinsert the button covers and make sure those were clean as well because it would be difficult to do so after the switch module had been re-soldered to the board. The buttons were yellow and dirty. This could have been anything from my uncle's old pipes to a moldy environment, but a white magic sponge with some all-purpose cleaner removes it all. I also removed some old glue from inside the buttons. The switches slipped right into the holes without any force. I began by soldering two connection points and then checked that they were still flush to the board before soldering the rest of the module. I then cleaned the area with 99% alcohol on the soft toothbrush and here's what it looks like. I went around the board checking for cold or cracked solder joints and re-soldered as necessary. I then of course cleaned the whole board with 99% alcohol and added a little bit of lube to the tuning knob. Lastly, I cleaned the tuner knob pulley to make sure it doesn't slip, cleaned the on-off switch with some electrical contact cleaner, and cleaned the display with all-purpose cleaner. And here's the completed board, before and after, and the joints cleaned up. I think it's time to reassemble the unit. You and me could make beautiful music together.
me could make beautiful music together. The unit turned on without blowing up, so I'm already happy. I'm using the little FM transmitter I used in the restoration of the flip clock radio to make sure I can use my own music and please the YouTube overlords. I don't get much reception in here, but if I lift up the antenna in the back of the unit, I get a few AM channels. As you see, I'm sending content from my smartphone to the Bluetooth FM transmitter. The sound is unprocessed and recorded with a camera microphone. I'm going to leave a link in the description for this little thing. Now, it will be an affiliate link. Uh, no, it doesn't cost you anything. Uh, and of course, I hate to ask, but please thumbs up, subscribe, hit the notification, all that um, if you've liked, because it really does help me and it doesn't cost you anything. Uh, it really does help the channel grow. So I want to say thank you for that. Uh, and also, I will be back soon with restoration. Um, I've got a follow up on the home theater and I've got a couple other uh, episodes in the work. Uh, so I promise it won't be as long. You're you're going to see some content soon. Uh, you know, again, it was out of my control, but whatever happened. So as always, I just want to say thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye bye. <laughs>